I'm Kimberly Chan. Welcome back. We have the Property Lim brothers here today again. Okay. Hello. We're Melvin and Adrian. And we have our lawyer from BR Law Firm, Kenison. Yay! Hello. Okay, so before I start today, right? Actually, Melvin and Adrian, I got my friend have a very burning question he wants to ask. Is it only people with the surname Lim can join your company. Even <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I must ask you all this question today. Okay, yeah, that's a very interesting uh, question also. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, we actually did talk about that. No <laughs> way! Uh, just kidding, just kidding. Yeah, okay. uh, we do have uh, Lim's in our uh, company and also we do have other surnames right. as well. So it's not a requirement? La. Not a requirement. Okay, he just only 10% are Lim's. La. Only 10%. <laughs> okay, actually not Singaporean surname is Lim anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Okay, back to the real topic today. Okay, <laughs> so being um, property experts, la, right? Uh, where do you see the property market in Singapore heading towards in the next one to two years? Yes, our uh, property market is uh, hot right now. So I um, think in the next one to two years, I think the prices will increase uh, at a, a gradual pace. Yeah, mm, yeah. I, th I think in fact, since the, the COVID situation last year, a lot of people were thinking like, you know, whether would there be a correction or not. But strangely, I think globally and especially Singapore, the prices has, has went up quite a fair bit and uh, across different categories. Lah. But I think the, the major segments has been large apartments, uh, landed properties especially and of course new launches, a lot of the, the new launches has also been moving very very gradually. For example, two years ago you can still find like a two beta new launch below a million. Uh, now, anything below a million they are all one betas and in fact, uh, I think in, in maybe six to nine months now you, can't, you cannot find a new launch that is below a million dollars. So I think prices have already moved up in, in tandem. Oh, 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 Kenneth, what do you think? He looks like there's something to say. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that how when you talk about gradual, it depends on how you look at the graph. Yeah. Okay, one man's gradual might be <laughs> oh, a, a steep, steep incline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. but I, I would say that um, some of the um, fundamentals, because a lot of my clients are um, from construction companies, so a lot of them have given me indirect feedback that Hey, look, um, wages are going up, material costs are going up. So if your factors of production are up, you know, your end product, okay, um, will definitely go up in price. Yeah. So I, I would say in a way, it's actually quite scary for, for the developers because they are saying that um, I'm selling this property to you at this price now. Okay, but I still have to build it. Yeah. So, so my factors of production, Okay, there's a general uptrend. Okay, so it, 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 it's it's an interesting sort of situation now, lah. Mm, yeah, mm. and I think coupled with the very low interest rates, mm. yeah. So because of low interest rates, uh, technically speaking, the, the buying power of, of purchases increase. Yeah, and uh, a lot of buyers are looking at this opportune time to come into the market to, to so-called take advantage of a low interest rate plus. Uh, I think the most major factors is also because there is a lot of quantitative easing policy uh, in the state, so a lot of liquidity are flowing into, into different countries. And uh, Singapore is also having the status of a very safe haven. So it's not just Singaporeans ourselves that want to buy our own properties. Uh, and Singapore has like a home ownership of 90 odd percent, but foreign countries are also looking at Singapore as a place to, to park their funds to, to own an asset right here because it's, it's a safe country, good governance and low interest rate plus land is so scarce. So uh, we are really like the eyeball uh, of a lot of people. Yeah, and I, I think definitely if, if you have the ability then uh, definitely uh, look at properties in, in your own homeland uh, in a sense. I see. Okay, so is it... Is when foreigners come to Singapore to buy houses, right? Is it more expensive for them or is it the same? It's the same, it's just that they have to pay the additional buyer stamp duty. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay, so I also heard my friends talking about this property term, something called like condition of sale. Mm -hmm. What is that about? <laughs> okay. Um, is that a Ken Kenny's question? Yeah, Kenny's okay, question. <laughs> okay um, within your standard option, okay, they always throw in this phrase, okay, uh, conditions of sale, mm. okay. Um, with various permutations, okay, um, from, uh, you know, uh, the most recent one is 2020, okay. So, um, generally speaking, 
what it does is that it sets out the framework okay of what are um, for resale transactions okay the usual terms that will apply mm. such as for example if you're late okay in completing the property purchase okay what is the interest rate that is set for you um, and also some other variables such as okay um, you know if you know if um, what is um, the number of access cards okay you have to pass over to the other side so a lot of this okay um, can be contracted out of so a lot of it I would um, my my basic take as a lawyer don't focus so much on the conditions of sale okay um, focus more on you know what exactly is it is that you want to contract for um, are you very finicky about ensuring that you get all of the access cards? Are you very finicky about, you know, making sure that there are no defects? Okay, that this is not leaking, there are no termites, etc. Be very specific about what you request from the seller. Okay, that I think is generally more important. And have it down in writing. Because mm. at you have the, to get yourself protected, right? Definitely, definitely. Because at the start of the purchase, okay, well, friend, friend, what? Okay, happy, you know, I want to sell, you want to buy. But then, after I take your money already, after um, the option is issued, then a lot of things might start to change. Yeah, mm. that's true. Yeah, when it comes to money, I think we still all have to be very careful. Everything in black and white. <laughs> yeah, so just now, Adrian, you mentioned that the market now is very hot. Yes, indeed. So, are there any cooling measures that the government has, like, will come up with maybe in the next one to two years? Um, yes, there has been talks and uh, rumours about when is the next uh, cooling measures uh, coming. Um, so I think um, we do not need to speculate because um, the, when the implementations of our cooling measures, it will come um, anytime because our government has already their plans. Uh, you won't know exactly when uh, it will um, take uh, in, in force. Um, so we have a high ownership in Singapore. I think uh, the risk is um, manageable and the property growth is uh, steady. So um, do not time the market. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think because right now as we speak, there's, there are already like close to 10 rounds of cooling measures pre-built into the price. So cooling measures has already exist since like 10 odd years back. Um, now we are at a very steady growth in the sense that uh, as, as we purchase and sell properties, we are all manoeuvring within all these cooling measures. And I think one good thing right now is that because of the cooling measures, the market is stable. Uh, in the event of really, I think if, let's say, there's, there's really any economic downturn or drastic event, the government can still release some cooling measures to resuscitate the market. So I think we are in a, in a time frame that, uh, like what Adrian mentioned, there's, there's no need to speculate the market. Uh, because in Singapore, if you time the market, what if the, the, the price goes the other way around? Yeah, so especially if it's your primary residence that you, your family, your kids are living in, try not to time the market. Don't, don't, don't sell and then rent and then try to wait for a price, price correction because it's very important to, to make sure that your primary residence, you're, you're always in the market. Right, so, so what you're saying is essentially there's no like right time or wrong time. Like. It's just whenever you need mm. yeah, yeah, to buy or sell the house in a way. We do see uh, some people being priced out of the market. Uh, example, uh, when the market is um, heating up, they sell and then they thought that the there will be correction coming in and then they want to re-enter. So, um, especially so for landed homes because the prices are moving really fast. So, if you do time the market, uh, do be very careful uh, because you never know when the, um, the, the tide will turn. Yeah. I see. Okay. Maybe just as an additional aside. Of course when I was your age okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or maybe slightly How before are you that. Now? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat <laughs> older. <laughs> um, I remember at one point of time, um, anecdotally, okay, um, when you buy a million dollar condo, people will say, hey, you sell one ah. Okay, so, um, but now, it has become the situation whereby you managed to buy a million dollar condo? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow! That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so I think that that says something about it all. Yeah. I yeah. think we cannot control the market la, in a way. Like, like what you say, we cannot control like the cooling measures, right? But we can control how you want to buy the house. So when you buy like a house or when you want to sell a house, are there any like common legal disputes that will happen between like the buyer and the seller? Are there any experiences that you would like to share? Mm, that, 
how should I put this? When, when, when people want to quarrel, they can oh. quarrel about anything and, and everything. But generally speaking, generically speaking, um, I would say that the common disputes that arise um, is really in relation to um, the state and condition of the property um, after um, you know, um, the, it has been handed over to the buyer. Okay, that is usually where um, you know, um, they might get their surprise. You know, um, that, oh, the, why is it in such a state and condition? You know, because versus when it was um, furnished, okay, when, when everything was there, okay, it, it might have a different look and a different feel to it. So, so um, but the law basically um, leaves it as it is, okay, because of the, the, that, that phrase of as is, where is. So, um, very often, um, the, the, the buyer must be realistic and must be mentally prepared that um, you know you are going to renovate this place anyway you are going to um, you know um, repaint and, and do up this place so so why quibble over you know this or, or that lah? because that is the common issue that, that arises I see okay mm. so the advice is just to be more realistic lah. do not mm. like think you know getting like super nice or, or yeah okay okay I think that's very like um, real advice actually. So I know okay, nothing is perfect in, mm. in, in the world or anything, right? Mm -hmm. So are there any policies do you think you can put in place that can benefit buyers and the seller? Um <laughs> wow, tricky I, I'm, not, I'm not government. <laughs> of course, of course. I mean just just in your opinion. Just in your opinion. Um oh, I would say that um, it, 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 it's it's a it's a tough question. Um, my take on it is that um, if there is a process, okay, that, that they, because right now there's a lack of process for after the sale is completed, okay, um, um, whether the, the place is given to you, okay, nicely swept up, nicely cleaned, okay, by some owners or in shambles, okay, with the old, you know, refrigerator uh, left behind. Okay, with the old moth-eaten uh, sofa left behind, okay, um, it, it's a bit open, okay, mm. and your your how should I put this? Your legal remedies um, um, aren't exactly um, that comprehensive because sometimes it comes down to a do dollars and cents issue. Are you going to pay me, your lawyer, okay, three thousand dollars to get back three hundred dollars? I mean, you can, but. <laughs> But Doesn't generally, make sense, right? yeah, generally people mm. don't do that, lah. Yeah. So um, if there was um, something that regulates, um, you know, this process just before handover, that might that might solve a lot of these issues, lah, with, with with teeth behind it. Yeah. I see. Wow. I think I think for that topic we can talk like another whole new episode, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. So as you, I mean, as you can see, it's uh, not so easy to buy like. Uh, property now in Singapore because the market is really really very hot so if you really want to find a very good property you know who to find we have Kenneth and we also have the Property Lim Brothers okay so if you want a dream home don't wait anymore now is your chance to buy it <laughs> alright I hope you guys learned as much as I did today with everyone so hopefully we'll see you next time thank you bye